going to talk today about uh, Java collections. Um, this, um, like like all material, I've tried to, um, to, to to formulate this to uh, address common common needs. Um, and uh, while this one doesn't have to do with Java language per se, it has to do with Java libraries and commonly uh, commonly needed resources for building your models. Um, <coughs> and specifically, there's frequently a need to store uh, collections of objects, sets, ordered sequences that we might call arrays or, or linked lists, um, dictionaries that we can look up a name or an ID and get back, uh, get back information about that without, without storing each in a row. And queues, which we might have, where we might have people in some sort of order, as dictated, um, perhaps by by a priority setting of some sort. And Java provides a, a quite rich set of collections, collection interfaces here, and collection classes here that um, support these constructs. For those who are not present uh, yesterday. Um, the interfaces define promises or contracts, service contracts, as it were, collections of, of services they provide in the form of methods that need to be supported. And then there's particular classes that implement them with certain features. So a, a list class, for example, allows you to go down it sequentially, um, one by one by one, to extract elements but doesn't allow you, doesn't provide a feature that allows you to reach into the list at any arbitrary position. So this provides a set of services. A queue will provide services for adding things to the queue and getting something at the head of the queue, the front of the queue. These are interfaces that provide that state some services and contracts that need to be adhered to. And then there's a set of classes that implement them, shown in, in, in black here. And um, we have sets. We have queues, we have lists, and we have maps, which map from some space of keys, where the key might be a name. You can look up information about a person with this name, or it might be a, a health, health um, serial number, HSN, which, um, which we can look up and get value about that person. Um, and there's a sorted map, where it's sort of some sort of sorted order in, in a regular, regular map. Um, and uh, as we talked about yesterday about this notion of subtyping and subclassing, these things are subtypes of collection, subtypes of iterable. So any of these you can iterate over and forward. You can go one by one by one through the things in this order. And there's some things that uh, by virtue of being collections, you can ask about them. I believe size is one of them, et cetera. So within any logic, there are these things called collection objects, and they look like kind of a, a blastosphere or something in, in early stages of cell division. Um, uh, should have four, not, not three. But um, there's uh, this is an indication of a collection. It comes from the palette. And when you have, uh, have a, um, an object like this, you can choose what sort of collection class you're going to be using. Um, is it an array list? Is it a link list? Is it a hash set, a link hash set, or a tree set? And there's some other choices. And that's the type of the overall collection. And then there's a declaration of what's the type of the elements. So the elements that are stored in this, these sort of things, e, this is a list of person, or a list of deer, or a list of trees, or a list of elephants. Um, Similarly, a set of cars or a set of cities or what have you. These are the elements here. This is asking you for, for the collection class and the, the elements class. Okay. Um, so uh, here we have uh, a collection. It doesn't have to be in a collections in a collection variable. So we don't need to have make use of the collection variable. But it's sometimes nice to do so because it has extra knowledge of how to display it. This is an example of a collection that's a, that's a hash table. Um, 
where the hash table basically associates each person with a double value. So if we have a reference to a person, we can say, hey, what's the, the value for them? And the, the significance of the value, the semantics of it here, the meaning of it is that this stores for, for each person, or for a given person, is sort of the last time they were infected. This is an example of this history information. We can implement very readily within an agent-based context. So we could store, okay, what was the last time they were infected? What was the last time they were exposed? What were the set of all times they've been infected over time? We could store that information. And each of these is a dictionary of which a hash table is just an implementation. Hash table is one way to implement a dictionary. So we're going to talk about some of these collections. Okay? So a dictionary is an interface, and, and a hash table is a way to implement it. Um, I actually just say it's a, dic a dictionary here, but in fact, it's it is, a, it is a hash table. Okay, so useful collections, arrays, array lists, link lists, dictionary sets, priority keys, binary trees. We're gonna try to hit these today, okay? Um, what, what are their common characteristics? They have the capacity to store information. I'm gonna more things, is there one more things? You can iterate through the elements, one by one by one, like in a loop. Do you remember that, that thing I, I showed? Um, in fact, I should have been been careful about it. Um, uh, within any logic, oh, I guess I closed down my, my any logic, um, but I'll, I'll call up my any logic. Um, there was that for loop um, that where I set um, where that uh, I set essentially that error to occur. Um, there we go. Um, there was four. In fact, it may even still be up here. Or maybe not. But it was uh, four. Remember this, agent A colon, like uh, this dot or mother dot get connections, something like that, um, or something along those lines. Um, this, this, this is an iteration over things. As long as this is a collection of some sort, as long as it's anything under here, excuse me, under here, as long as it's iterable, you can, you can iterate over it, as long as it's one of these things. They're all, they're all iterable in that sort of way. Um, there's a separation of interface from implementation. Uh, there's often several implementations to support an interface. So a dictionary can be implemented in many different ways. Some might be really efficient for small numbers of things. Some might be efficient for large numbers. Um, some might further provide sorting, for example, of the results, etc. cetera. Um, and Java supports a, a, a rich set of collections in its libraries called uh, java.collections, and it has a whole set of libraries there. Okay, and many collections use the generic syntax we introduced yesterday, array list of person. So this is array list that contains persons, a hash map that maps from strings to persons. These generic type parameters must be classes, okay? They have to be classes. They can't be like lowercase int. Okay, so we're going to talk about these things. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about built-in Java arrays. Um, Java arrays look like this. The syntax looks like this in, in Java. Um, you say, okay, you want an array. It's an int array. It's an array of it's a sort of a, uh, a sequence, contiguous sequence of integers, zero, one, two. Minus five. Um, we can create a reference to such array by saying new int, and this is some number to n. Um, this this n it could be n as long as n has a value by this point. So maybe n is 100. It will create an array like the 100. So so this might be you know you want to create a, a, a list of the cell the cell numbers that that have this certain characteristic or something like that. Um, okay, and this is the way you write to it. So if you have such a thing, if you have a reference in array, you write this of, of zero equals two. This is writing to the first element. Of it. Um, there's one of each, the second element. Or you can create an array like this, array population by sex, and this lists, you know, the number of people in the population for, for males and for females, or something like that. Array of cities, uh, Bangor, Portland, and Muslim. Um, so we saw something like this before. Remember that? Um, okay. Um, you can have an array of size zero. It just doesn't contain anything. That's different than a null and having a null thing. A 
there's just an array that happens to be empty. Okay. So what does this look like? It looks something like this. Um, so suppose when n suppose n equals ten, then we have allocated after this thing. It, we speak of it allocating a um, an array which has ten slots in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and initially, I think it's technically it's, it's zero inside by default, but if we assign this, it would, this would go in the first slot. Um, just replacing it in the first slot here. That's what that means. It's putting it in slot zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, seven. Okay. Um, if we had this, we'd be allocating an array that looks like this. One, one, two, three, and nine, three. So we could look up item zero, be one, one, two, three. We could look up item one, at, at index one, nine, nine, nine thirty-two. Okay. Um, or we could have something like this. This is an array of s this is an array that um, contains references to strings. Why a reference? Because string is a class, and, and you don't contain the things in the class. You name references to these things. So here. The first element is a reference to a string that has the word Bangor. Right? Maybe it has other properties. I don't. I don't know. But it does its job, and this is functionally what it contains. I can ask for it. You know, print it out. So one. Second one is Bangor, and the third is uh, with appropriate size is Moose Lake Me Um. Okay. So let's talk about Java arrays of this sort. Um. What are the pros and cons here? Pros. Um, are that you can easily specify the initial contents. I mean, this is very, very practical. You could easily go to something like, do something like this, or do something like this. It, it just, you don't have to go one by one and then say what they are, you know, list, list, and you, you could just directly allocate it like this. There's a special syntax for specifying the contents, or like this. And this sort of automatically puts them in there, it sizes it appropriately, does all that sort of good work. Which is, hey, it's a convenience to do things fairly quickly. It's simple syntax. Um, don't worry much about this, but basically it can contain ints. It can actually contain, it can contain the value, or it can have a reference to a string, or a reference to an integer with a capital I, which would actually be a class, an object with a class integer, which would be have a reference from it. There might have the value too. But it's nice to be able to put this in here. It takes less, less in the way of memory. Okay. Um, so that's that's uh, something you don't have to worry about that much. But if you've ever wondered about int versus integer, this is just you deal with references to these guys, whereas this thing is actually the actual value it, itself. Okay, um, you can convert between them pretty clearly, completely straightforwardly. That's a fast lookup. All you have to do, you want to you want to look it up this element, that element. You could do it very very quickly. Um, can iterate over it very quickly. What are the cons? It's painful to extend. So if you had this and you wanted to add Augusta, or you wanted to add Portland, or sorry, you wanted to add Brunswick to Maine, um, you'd have to go create a new one. Suppose you wanted to add Portland, or sorry, Augusta and and um, and uh, Brunswick. We'd have to create a new one of size five, and then copy one. Um, Pointed to Augusta and pointed to So that's kind of a, a pain. Um, <coughs> and you have to look things up by int. I can't kind of look it up by a name. I can't say, you know, find the, the entry for Moose Lake and Duncan directly. There's no built in way to do that. Um, okay, um, but there are some pros. So you find these used a lot. Is used a lot in, in, in models. Okay, let's talk about array list. Now, array list is like a more flexible version of array of those arrays we just saw. It's a class. This thing is built into Java. This this thing here is built into Java. These these are built in how you allocate them, how you do new, and, um, and, and for with that special syntax and the special analysis. An array list um, is a is a class. It's a generic class. And you can say array list of int. It's actually array list of integer. Um, in any case, um, 
It has some pros. You have rapid insertion deletion. You have integer-based indexing, just like you do. And the other thing is you could have easy combination, or sorry, easy extension. So this would say um, insertion, deletion, uh, and extension, OK? Um, OK. Uh, um, so um, an array list has lots of nice features for that. Um, once again, you can have an empty array list just as you can have a good uh, array. But the nice feature is it allows you to add elements in over time, and it automatically extends it. So you can just add a new one and extend, add a new one and extend, add a new one and extend. So if you want to add Augusta, you could just add it, it'll create, you know, conceptually it will create another slot for it. Now what's really going on there behind the scenes is it's, it, it may be going and, and placing it in a new, new block or what have you, but but it's it's doing the necessary work, and it functions as if you could just extend it directly, however long, however big you want. Um, if you know the size ahead of time, that isn't much of an advantage, and I'd suggest using a built-in array for that reason. But if you don't know the built the size up front, you want to add elements in. Array list is probably your ticket. Okay. Um, Okay, a link list is a sequential list of elements of arbitrary length, and you can iterate forward down the list. And Java actually provides, uh, it turns out, a double link list, which provides, so this is what's called a singly link list. Each, you have a reference out here to the whole thing, and then each of these blocks sort of contains a, a list to something, and then you know, a list to another thing, a list to another thing. Why might you want this as opposed to an array list? Well. This allows you to really easily excise out one of these. You can take this, point this thing to here instead, you can remove something right in the middle of that more readily than you can. Um, this does allow for some deletion, but I think it's considerably more, more overhead to do it. This is actually quite quick to manipulate. Um, Well, it's, it's more that this is a way of storing uh, information that doesn't, uh, that allows you to, so this allows you to, to have a, a bunch of information on, on persons, and yes, you could have those persons in the city, and if one of those persons were to leave the city, you could uh, fairly readily get rid of them from the records kind of of the city's population. Um, Oh, like what are these guys? Yeah, what are those guys? These are just ways of keeping track that there's a collection of these things. There's a person, there's a, there's a whole set of persons here, right? A, 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 a sort of a, but it's not just a set, it's a sequence. Okay. They're, they're in an order. And this provides a way of grouping that, those sequences in an order, but in a way that allows for easy excision oh. as well, easy, easy removal. Whereas if you wanted to excise, let's think about this. Suppose I wanted to excise this element here. How would I do that? Yeah, I got I got to allocate a new array of that same size minus one, and then I've got co copy from here, 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 copy from here, 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 and consolidate it. And that's kind of a pain. But if you're, you, you're actually doing that, you don't have to do that. There's a function, there's a method that does that for you. It's just high overhead because you're actually doing this. Correct. Although for some of these. Um, for Java, I can't remember offhand if the library provides that function, but in any case, you would write a function like that. It's just that, yes, it takes, it's not terribly hard, it's just uh, it imposes an overhead. There's a lot of work to be done if you have to do that frequently. And that, that it turns out, has a cost, okay? Um, so, so a linked list is, is one thing you'll see, or a dumpily linked list. Here, you can go backwards or forwards. You've got to find out who's the person before me and the person after. So if you wanted to maintain this information in a sequential way, this is a, a convenient um, uh, a convenient thing. So suppose you want to have a, a link list uh, a hist of history information for a person. Um, so um, right. So uh, maybe maybe I have for a given person history information on the persons they've infected in order of infection occurrence over time. I might just add these on to a linked list uh, over time. 
um, and it would sort of record this information. Um, so, you know, when I first get infected, do it like this. And I don't know if I'll ever get, if I'll ever infect someone again, but the first time I'll record this or record it here, and then maybe I infect somebody again, so we'll create another one or, and do that, and do it another one, do that. Now, in that case, I'd say maybe the link list you use, because uh, you're just adding to the end. You don't really need to remove things in the middle um, that frequently, but um, you could do it as well with the link link list. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about a dictionary. Now, this I, I think this guy is of only modest importance to you, but you will see it occasionally in any logic. And it's worth knowing what it is. Let's talk about something which is really very very useful, like like an array and array list. You'll probably end up using them some. Dictionary. A dictionary is is a way of mapping from keys, in other words, from some information about um, sort of an identifying piece of information for for what to look it up by to some results. So it's it's kind of like um, uh, if if you were to um, it's kind of like being able to go to a uh, a place and just um, uh, say okay. Um, this is the name I had given to the thing. Now go go find it. Um, uh, we used to say because sort of a card catalog in a in a library, but that's not an example that resonates with people much anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but we we have some way of finding information, and there's probably a, a better analogy. Um, I know I know when I was in university, we used to g be able to give a, uh, a code. You know, we would say essentially some arbitrary thing, um, so you might say tree, and then you could go look up your exam by tree, um, uh, and, you know, I'd look up tree, and what was the grade for tree, and that would prevent them from having to post people's names, um, and try to post people's names sequentially by the grade, <laughs> so then you just go look your name up, <laughs> and now, oh, oh, uh oh, it's way down there, um, now I'm really in trouble, um, Okay, so um, uh, here you can you can look up um, you can look up things. And you can look it up by name. You can look it up by HSN. You can look it up by location, and and this can actually implement what's known as content index memory, sort of um, where you can you can look up the uh, the item using sort of arbitrary information. Um, so an array, by contrast. You could look up contrast and an, uh, con information and an integer. In other words, you could say, what is array neighborhood indices of i, where i is 0 or 1 or 2? And that's really fast to do that. But, but you have to know what, under what i to look it up. Here, you could look up, OK, for a person named such and such, what, what is the information? So for a person in your model, this could be the key here could be a reference to a person. You say for that person, they were, you know, their uh, number of times they infected anyone was such and such. Or um, for this person, their um, um, their influence over the course of simulation was such and such, or what have you, or their location was such and such. Okay, and it turns out there's uh, different ways of implementing this: a hash map and a hash table, which I'm not going to go into. There's some, yeah. Yeah, you could you could store it all in one place. Now, there's an important question of if, if you have patients individuated, in other words, distinguished in the model as as agents, then you know for that case you might just store it within them, like, like, store it associated with them. But there are some times where you might want to you might want to um, have information on uh, that's external to the to the uh, person, like maybe it's more about um, you want to be able to look up pairs of people that were ever in contact and find out yes or no was there transmission between that pair. Okay? In which case you could have a, a dictionary that maps from pairs of individuals, maybe sorted in some order, um, or maybe not, to um, to true or false. And if it's not in the list, you know, you know, it's not in the list at all, they never were in contact. If it's in the list and it's false, they were in contact, but there was no transmission. If they, if, if they're in the list and the answer is true, you know, in other words, it looks up to true, you know, they were in contact, but um, there was transmission. Or maybe you record not only whether or not there was transmission, but the time of the contact, the last time of the contact, and information on the proximity.
proximity of the contact or the nature of the contact. You can store all that information in there. And that's not information per se about the person. It's about pairs of people. So you might not store it in the person. You might store it in, in main. So it's kind of like thing. a level up. Like you have a patient chart and above that you have an electronic health record if you want to know. Yeah, yeah or, or information about a ward. You know, it's, it's a yeah. group of people. If a ward is itself reified as an object, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an agent. I'm just thinking there's some things which are specific to agents. And for the most part, we store those in the agents themselves. But, but sometimes we have information that transcends a particular agent or that's on arbitrary groupings of agents. Maybe it's on, for the CWD model, maybe it's, um, you know, you have a, um, a mapping from um, groups of deer, you know, where there's a, were those groups ever ever together? Or, um, you know, maybe you have um, groups of size too, and, and you find we, you could, so so the key here would be of the integer, okay, groups of size two, there's all these different ones that were of size two. You know, this deer was with that deer, this deer was with this other, groups of size three, it was these deer, groups of size four, it was these deer, or something like that. I mean, um, it's just not everything is about the agent themselves, and so those, those things that aren't, you might store elsewhere. But yes, you can store an electronic health record, but again, the electronic health record type information, the stylized version of that, might be in the patient record, in the patient themselves, because it's about them. Um, whereas information on dyads, carer, you know, carer, K-E, care -E, um, cared for and, and care, caring individuals, those, those might be stored in a, in a in a hash table or you know a dictionary that maps from sort of um, that to to information about them or something like that. Okay. Um, so we might have a, a string that maps from maybe maybe a string that maps from um, you know uh, um, oh well, well we could map well, we could have a map from um, potentially from something like um, the current state somebody is in to the actual people who are in that state or something like that if you really wanted to find all the people who are infected at the current time or something. You can do it by iterating through, but maybe we want to maintain that information somehow in a separate place. Um, find all the people who are in this demographic subgroup as you know, dictated by a cube of, of sort of possible correspondences. Okay, so what's associated with the dictionary? Two collections collection of keys and a collection of values, and each key can be used to look up a value, okay? Um, okay, so um, you can really rapidly insert things here, and you can insert items, um, uh, this is insert items by associating from information. Um, the cons are, well, okay, I, I don't want to get into it. It can be a larger data structure, um, but that's okay. So imagine looking up city characteristic based, based on names or something like that. Or, well again, on a personal level, you could maintain a list, a collection of, maybe it's a linked list, maybe it's an array list, of which cities they've ever lived in. Right. That would be kind of a useful thing. Um, okay, well, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna comment on that. Let's talk about sets. Um, so there's some slight differences, if you're interested, between hash table and hash hash map about whether they allow things in them that are null. Can you look up a null key or, or have things that are um, uh, null values um, uh, for a given key, that sort of thing. Um, so could you have someone who never visited any city? Rep 
reference ref to uh, of of array type. That's the best way to put it. Of of array type. Okay. Um, so here I would have something like int my array and it would equal null. Okay. It, it, it would have the unique value null. Um, in this case, my array would, by its type, it could point to various arrays. Point to array lots of elements in it, it point to an array with one element in it, point to array pair of elements. It could point to any of these things, but in this case, it doesn't point to anything. You, I mean, you write a reference like that. It, 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 it's known that it doesn't point to anything. Okay? So that's one possibility. Second possibility is you could have a, um, so this is a, a value that points to not, it's, it, it, it could point to things by its, by its type. It, this, it, this syntax means that it, that if you were to, the, the best way to think about this syntax is if you were to put a number in here, you get back an int. Okay, that's kind of, that's kind of what that, that syntax comes from. And um, so here, this is an array that, that points, uh, it could point to integer, integer. Uh, it's a it's a value. This variable holds a value that could point to integer arrays. So it could point to all these, but it points to nothing. This thing points to nothing. It doesn't refer to any particular thing. It could, but it doesn't. Okay. Um, it's it, it's known to have that value. Okay. Another possibility. Another thing is an a reference a reference to an empty array, um, empty array, or i.e. i.e. array of size zero. Okay. Now here, so um, here we could have. Um, oh gosh. Um, okay. Uh, uh, excuse me, it's not, it's not valid syntax. Uh, it's, this is just like that. Um, my array, and here this goes to new um, int, say, of zero. Okay, what is this? This is this is pointing to some sort of. Um, this is referring. It's a reference to some sort of thing that holds holds nothing at all. It's like, uh, it's just like it's pointing to something which, which which doesn't really serve much, much value. It's, um, it, it, it doesn't have any elements in it. You can ask what its length is. Its length is zero. Um, what good is it? It's not much good. There's really no use having this, but you can do it. Uh, it would just, it, it just occupies space. <laughs> space. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a real-world analogy that's. Um, uh, I wish we could bring you some analogy. Yeah. Oh, oh, because you want to show that you're not yet, you're not yet referring to anything. Um, you haven't yet been assigned to. You haven't yet been given something to refer to. Um, and so you're still waiting for that information. For example. So once someone gets infected, it's Yeah, I mean. So right, when someone gets affected, maybe then it will allocate the array and they start with one like this or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but right now there's nothing. But yeah, so so this is a ref to an empty array, which is kind of this the degenerate structure, which really doesn't serve much purpose. It's it's a it could could be a collection, but but it's just it's been defined so in such a limited way that it serves no no real uh, no real purpose. I wish I had a good analogy to this, but okay. You so so when I was at MIT as an undergraduate, um, there was this door that I would pass every day on this thing called the infinite corridor that Jeff Jeff will remember. Um, and um, I'm trying to remember is it? Um, it's this long, long corridor. It's about a quarter of a mile long to a half a mile. I can't remember a third of a mile long. And um, it's this corridor that runs down, down the center. And Along this corridor, there were these offices of, of faculty back then. A lot of them were offices of faculty. 
um, and departments and the bursar's office was there, et cetera. And there's this one this is one door and it said Professor Epsilonsky, okay? Um, and um, I would pass it every day. And um, and and just nearby there was what was called a, a computer cluster. And at that day, back in those days, this is this was late eighties and we had uh, instant messaging and so on. It was just like way back when, so you could send these things. And there was one of these computer clusters back there that would do this. It was called Project Athena. And I'd walk back sort of there. And, and then one day I was walking back there, and I said, something's wrong geometrically. Because the corridor would cut behind, so it was kind of like the infinite corridor would go this way. It was this long, long corridor. And then the Athena cluster was, was here, and um, uh, you would you would sort of go in a, a little uh, alcove, and you'd sort of go around here, and there's this thin wall, and then you'd walk around here, and, and the door to the Athena cluster is back here, and so you'd kind of go like this. But the odd thing was that, you know, I was going down here. Wait, this post is impossible. This is impossible because there's doors right here, and and so I went around. I went back to, to the office door of Professor Absolonsky, which was located right here. And I looked in, what's going on? Because it looked like there was a curtain over the door every time I passed it. And I looked in, I looked in there, but it was, it was just paint. It was, it was, it was a door into, an, into a wall. And you could open the door, all you'd see was a wall. Um, and, I mean, if you, if you pounded through the wall, it would you just come out here, or probably like this thing. Um, so, so this is kind of the equivalent of Professor Epsilonsky's door. By the way, it's named Epsilonsky because we talk about as epsilon goes to zero, it's like really, really thin, 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 thin. And you'd have to be pretty darn thin to live in there, I tell you. Um, so, uh, uh, he, he, yeah, he, he, he was a degenerate. This is the door of Professor Epsilonsky. It's like there's no use to it. It's a it's a degenerate door. Um <laughs> so so why would you could you build a door like Professor Epsilonsky's? You bet you could. And a, a carpenter would be glad to install it. Um, um no problem. Um uh, easy easy fit. Um but would it serve much purpose? No. Does this serve much purpose? No. But you can do it. It's just it, as degenerate as Professor Epsilonsky. Um, by the way, it's still there, I think. Um, but um, not not certain of that. But I, I checked on a number of years ago. It was still there. Um, in any case, um, moving right along. Um, so uh, a third thing that you might get confused is um, reference to a larger but still uninitialized array. Okay, What do I mean by uninitialized? What I mean is, this is a very specific term um, in computer science, um, what I mean is that things have been, been put into it yet. Nothing has been written here. Nothing has been placed explicitly here. That's what we call uninitialized. So, so sometimes when you're formatting a disk, you say, like, this disk needs to be initialized. Or something. That's what it means. It needs to have some, some initial data put there. Your model needs to be initialized. It needs an initial state. Okay. So here, here uh, you don't really say that about models, but you could. Um, uh, so, so these things aren't written to. So when you first create this array, before this thing, this is kind of an uninitialized array. Nothing's been put in it. And a ref to one of those is very, yeah. Very different. Maybe a huge array. Um, it's a very particular array. It's not a null. This is saying I'm, I don't point to any particular array. I'm, I'm, I'm pointing to no array. That's what that means. I'm pointing to no array right now. Give me if you want. Give me an array to point to, and then I'll gladly point to it. But I'm right now I'm not pointing to any array. Um, um, it it it'll be as if, um, you know the SGI had records of cars that they've impounded, and they're going to auction them off, right? Um, and right now, they don't belong to anyone. Well, OK, you could say they belong to SGI. They belong to no one individual. So so the, in, the owner, if there were an owner reference associated with that car, it would be null. 
Oh, well, okay. If they were if they were individual owner, whatever, it would be no. Um, and and that points to no. It's owned by nobody right now. You could say, um, or I don't know. Um, you know, crown certain types of crown are owned by by no one person or what have you. That would be sort of like a null reference. This is more like <laughs> this. This has a reference. It's just a, it's a bizarre reference. It's a reference to something that's quite. Um, uh, that's quite uh, quite useless, like the door of Professor Epsilonsky. Um, this, by contrast, is pointing to some significant amount of information. Um, or it's, it's, it's something that could hold a significant amount of information. It's a very particular structure pointing to. It just hasn't been yet filled out. It'll be like a, a car body that is yet to have things put in it. It's like a shell of a car. And you have to put things in it to make it useful, or, or like a house that hasn't yet doesn't have furniture in it. And 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 to make it a useful house, to make it a house you want to live in, you're going to want to put some things in there. Um, maybe you want to put a furnace in if it's winter. And maybe you want to put you know um, a chair in there and a table. Um, maybe you want to put your computer in there so you can run any of it. Um, but anyway, this is this is a wrap. So here we might have. Um, uh, you know my my rap, my array, and um, it's pointing to some some array. We just haven't written to it yet. We haven't really updated things. We haven't put things in there. And I think by default Java put zero in there. Um, um, and uh, in which case you don't have to do zero, but it's good practice to kind of put something in just to be absolutely clear. Yeah, I know exactly what's going on. There. So here here just kind of awaiting. But it's better than the door. Th no, here this is a degenerate question. Is this is this initialized or not? Well, it's a size zero. That's like asking is Professor Epsilonsky's office. Does it have furniture in it? Well, there's really no office there, so it doesn't have furniture. Um. So anyway, um, does that help answer your question? No, 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 no. Um, that's, a, that's an extremely good question. Okay, let's talk about a set. A set doesn't impose ordering. All the things we've talked up to thus far, uh, I've talked about thus far, impose ordering. This is an order associated. One thing comes before another. This thing is an order. This thing is an order. Orders. There, there are orders there. They come in an order. There's an imposed order among the elements. A set doesn't have an order. All you can ask about a set is, hey, does it contain something? Does it contain this? Does it contain that? Um, there's no ordering elements. We don't have no particular one of the privileges coming before another. And there's set operations. Um, union operation, intersection operation, set difference operation. So you could take two sets. You could say, oh, these are the set of people that have ever been infected. These are the set of people that ever died or that died. These are the set of people that have been infected more than twice or whatever. What's the set of people that infect more than twice and die? Something along those lines. These set of people, you know, were lived in um, uh, lived in this region or went into this region at one point or another. This set of people were infected. What's the set that, that uh, sort of have done both? Okay. Um, or you could take the inter or the union. You want to consider people who are in this city or that city. You take a, a set of them. And then you can iterate through the set and print out their names, for example. That's a very useful thing. Um, so you might you might just have that in a, in a function, a method that you create, a reporting method. That uses this to create. It may not sit around as a long-term set, but but it's something you use for the calculation. So, for example, keep a track of persons that have been infected thus far, ever infected. Just add them into the set when you get infected. Add them in. Now, if they're infected twice, well, they're in the set already. It doesn't matter if you add them. They're already there. And some people, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It precisely. So, if you wanted to keep track of unique order, you could put them in an array, okay. and and that would impose a. You know, the order of the array would reflect the chronology right. of their, their infection. Okay. Um, 
or or for a given person, you might have an array, an array list would be more likely what you'd have for both, where that lists the people I've ever infected, right? For that array, for that person, it lists the people they've ever infected. Anytime they infect a new person, you add it to the array list. You add so it's it to the array list. It's chronologic, yeah, exactly. So each time they infect that particular person, infect a new person, you add it to their array list. And then at the end of the simulation, you have a complete recounting of for every person who they infected, right? Um, alternatively, if you, if you have an infection where you can get infected more than once, you could say, who did I get this infection? From, from whom did I get this infection? Did I contract this infection? Um, and, you know, maybe you're getting infected um, with gonorrhea, you know, oh, once, twice, three times, four times, and for each one, I might list, okay, I got infected from this person, or that person, or that person, or that person, right? So, so that might be, might be something. Yeah. Uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I was just being sloppy and inconsistent. Yeah, in general, like, so sometimes, like yesterday, when you were talking about um, Enum, yeah, Enum, you, know, you, would, you would do dot, you know, um, yeah, Christy dot, yeah, right. the, the type. Okay. In, the, in that case, in that case, you're just accessing, and, uh, no, actually, uh, technically, what's going on is, so I didn't talk about it yesterday, but technically, super powerful because you could add things to them that would say, you know, like for each successive province, you could say what's the centroid of the province, or what's the size of the province, the population of the province, and it could keep track of that information. Um, so, so there, what that thing was before, like ethnicity dot Métis, or something yeah. like that, that ethnicity would be the name of the enum class, ethnicity. So just as we sometimes have person dot person dot, um, you know, uh, the name of a, um, of a state that's defined within them. Um, well, yeah, yeah but, but it would be for a static, static variable. It'd be a, static. It's a static variable, because it's about person, the class, okay. not about a pretty good, per, not a particular person, but personhood, sort of, there, there might be a state infective that's defined, only one state infective, it's in one of the state charts for person, and, and, and you'd ask person, capital P, uh, you know, dot, infective. And, and that's, a, that's sort of a name for being infected, the, the name for the being in the infective state that applies to all predictive people, that if, if they're in that state, they're infected. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something having to do with personhood, sort of how we define personhood, the meaning of, of what it means to be a person in this model. Yeah, whereas this is definitely defined at, 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 at if you have a particular set, an instance of set. A particular set you can call dot contains and you pass it an element that you want to test. Does it contain a person? Does it contain this time? Does it contain this location? And it can look that up, um, union intersection. Okay, priority queue. Um, you'll actually hear something about those this in a few minutes, uh, very likely. Um, so a queue is a way of representing kind of a waiting list, okay? So you have, if you have a list of people awaiting treatment, maybe they come into an SDI clinic and they're awaiting treatment. Maybe they're in an emergency room and they're awaiting treatment. Maybe they're awaiting a transplant operation. You have a queue associated with them. And, and you can prioritize it according to different priority lists. It can be unprioritized. In other words, everyone's you know, first come, first serve. That's fine. Um, for a given priority level, it's first come, first serve anyway. But, but if you have some way of, of um, prioritizing it, like say, okay, this person's in priority level one, this person's in priority level two, for each one, that, like they have their own list, okay? So um, you could have continuous priority levels or you could have discrete. Um, the simplest things to think about, were they all at the same priority, just one line? If you have several, if you have, say, two priority classes, it's like having a first class and then an economy, and each one has its own line. For the first class, if you're in first class line, you go before any of the economy folks. I'm not saying that's true, but it, 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 the equivalent. 
equivalent thing. Um, and I do think they ask, right? They ask first class for all our first class and Star Elite and, and, you know, and Star Alliance Gold members are now bored with their lever. Um, okay, now boarding area one. Um, okay, um, here I go. Um, okay, uh, oops. Um, okay, so a key use here is uh, representing the lady. Um, and this is super useful if you want to represent lists in your model. Um, so Amy is representing a list associated with transplant. Um, uh, I have another student who's representing a list associated with treatment for an infectious condition. Um, here you have people waiting and they get, and you call poll to get the first person in the list. It keeps track of ordering them according to priorities. If they're all in order, just keep track of the order they came in. They start you know, at the back for their priority level and then you go poll and it gives you the one that's next and it gives you the one that's next. And you can keep on polling and get people off there, treat them in turn. And it just keeps track of them being all queued up. Yeah. Um, so, so that was used behind the scenes, yeah. Um, but I didn't have to do that. That's that sort of process-oriented modeling. It automatically has one of these. But um, uh, actually, yes, I did. Actually, I did use it explicitly at one point where um, if people get sick, they uh, get in a priority queue, and then um, where then they get injected into the network, and it draws them from that priority queue. I did do that. In fact, you're right. Um, but, but you know, in these other models, like um, there's a fixed number of doctors who could treat people who are getting uh, this, who are ill with this infectious condition, and so they're queued up. And the more people that are sick, the more longer the queue is, and longer it takes to treat people, and, and they get treated one by one by one. Um, so you can call Paul to get the people one by one off the queue. And the beauty of it is that it maintains all these in the right order. You don't have to worry actually about. All you have to specify is, given two people, which one is higher priority? That's all you have to specify. And um, and it takes care of keeping them in the right order, advancing them as you go poll, poll, so, so you remove them from this queue, they're just lined up, and you keep on working through them. Or you can call peak. Peak lets you see the person at the front of the line. Oh, that's, that's him. Oh, okay. Um, and, and then you can go off and do some more work, and then maybe eventually you poll him. Um, anyway, so so cues are are really handy, really handy for sort of showing a list, waiting for something, and they basically do the work for you. You just have to specify a, a comparator. So there's something called priority queue in Java that keeps track of this for you. Okay, building your own collections. Um, right. Um, I'm not going to talk about this much, but suffice it to say, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes in your models you find yourself wanting to store data. Like, let's suppose you, you want to store up history information on a person. Maybe it's an electronic health record type, stylized version of that, um, representing the sort of data you get from a chart review for the patient, so off a patient chart. So maybe you want to bundle together a bunch of information like this. And in Java, the, you could put it, you could just put it in the agent class, but you, you probably want to eventually create a class that's called health record or something like that, and it has these things in there, and it knows how to print itself out, and knows how to put itself in a database, and it knows how to, how to, you know, answer questions about itself, about how complete it is, or whatever. You just put it in a class of your own. So, so eventually you may want to build your own little classes in Java, okay? And it's actually really easy to do. I'm not saying you have to do it at first, you don't, but eventually it becomes, it becomes kind of a second nature thing. If you need to clump together a bunch of information so it's not cluttering up your whole agent class, so you can add information to there in the future, you can read it in and write it out and all those sorts of things, the natural thing to do is put it in a class of its own. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like a kid, a little kid. Eventually they may get a room of their own in the home. Eventually you might want a class of your own. So actually, you saw some of them yesterday. Now the key is, uh, I do want to adhere very rigorously to this timing, and so we'll have to break within 10 minutes. But um, 
let me count the number. Um, uh, I think though what you're asking is, so I've, I have lots of cases where I have classes defined, but I think what you're asking is classes to kind of wrap up information, right? Because um, uh, like I have these classes I talked about yesterday that are predicates, but I'm not sure you want to hear about those. Um, uh, but let's talk about classes to, to wrap up information. So yeah, um, let's go. Uh, let's go take a look at some some models here. I think we should be able to um, find some models with that. Um, do, do, do. Um, right. Um, so this ABM clinic model certainly is some. I just don't want to scare you. Um, Okay, uh, the HPV model, um, the HPV model might, oh yeah, I think it, it has some. Well, okay, um, let's, sure, I'll load in the AB, uh, this one, um, that, that's good, uh, ABM clinic model. But um, before that, I'll, I'll show you this, um, this one, the hybrid, remember this hybrid one? And there was something called agent entity, remember we saw this yesterday? Here I defined a class because I want to carry around I want to have an entity that also carried around additional information. Remember that? And so I wanted something that's in every way an entity. It's an always an entity. And in fact, it reuses all the normal mechanisms of entity. It just defines some additional information it takes care of. Um, it knows how to print itself, knows how to sort of render itself as a string, and it knows how to give up the associate person and to be, to be formed in the first place. So that's an agent entity, and that's a class I define so that I can pass it around. Uh, but, but I think what you're talking about is classes to wrap up information. Um, yeah, so, um, so y y here's an example. Um, in fact, I think even ABM, ABM model birth death might, um, do, do I have that? Oh, no, ABM model birth death, I, I closed. So let's let's go over that. Boom. Um, hey, oh, I can't do the Eclipse debugging one with that. Okay, so just, just a second. Um, so Eclipse, there we go, close. Oh, wait, 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 yeah, I want to be sure I didn't leave that in a broken broken state. Sorry, just a second, folks. Um, I just want to be sure I don't save this out in a broken state. Um, because I, I did that thing for debugging. Okay, so this guy here, established offspring connection code. Uh, yeah, this is still commented out. Okay, um, model build. Okay, let's just close this now. Um, good, okay. Hey, oh man, it's building everything. Okay, um, okay, close. Okay, okay now we want to load in a ABM model because I think there may be um, there may even be a thing here. Um, right. Um, is there history information? Nope. Okay. So I guess it's ABM model with birth death that we, the, or sorry, this uh, hybrid, um, the clinic model. Where is it? It's a hybrid model. There we are. ABM clinic model. Okay. So um, what this is a model, it accumulates um, some history information on. Um, on people, and there's this history event manager that's used to to store away. Oh, okay, that was okay. I thought I, I had it in here. Oh man, um, uh, I think what I'm going to have to do. Oh, well, here here's an example. Yeah, this is a great example. Um, so um, this is a pair. The pair of two things. I wanted to be able to create a pair of two things. This is actually a very generic one. So I want to be able to have a pair of like person and time or whatever like that. And so this actually can take, you could tell it like person and double the capital D. I create a pair of them. And then I can call get first, get second on this to get out each, each element. And the reason I wanted to use this, so it's kind of a meta class. Um, the reason I wanted to use this was that um, I wanted to, um, be able to, so here, search, replace. I want to be able to find a pair. Boom. Um, here we go. Um, okay, yes, right. Um, so here, I wanted to be able to return, um, in this case, determine appointment in intern in, in room. 
So I wanted to be able to, when I created an appointment for a patient, I wanted to be able to return back um, a pair of a particular intern that they're going to be seeing in a room that they're going to be meeting in, okay? And so basically this allowed me to do it. This is sort of a, a thing that allows me to say, okay, I want a pair of these two things. And then in the actual code, um, I could return this appointment info, which contains exactly these things, okay? So, so this is a way of kind of returning this packaged up component of these two things. Um, and then there's other places where, where I, I want it to, like um, here, here I'm using it again, um, or present for walk-in care, present for book care. I get back that, that information. Um, and I, I use it elsewhere. So that's, that's a, a little example. I actually have a model, I'm pretty darn sure, which has history information um, sort of stored up for a person. So ever over time in the model, as things happen to them, it stores up history. And that would be another example. And I can't remember off the top of my head which model that was. I thought it was this one I load in with this history event manager, but I see that's particularly simplistic. So I'm going to have to find that for you, sort of where, where that is. But I'll see if I can send a, a note about that. Okay. So any final questions? Is there another job question? There may be. Um, uh, I, I hope there will be, but it depends on, no one's spoken to me yet to say they really need to meet. So it, it depends. Well, if, if there is, uh, well, I think it would be really useful to start thinking of some of what we learned yeah. here. And then so we'll be able to probably maybe like submit it to the Okay. So you're not talking about uh, specifically just collections today. You're talking about sort of things. Yeah, covered. exactly. So like the, you see, if you look at main, you have functions, you have yeah. variables, yeah. And, and so we kind of know what they are and what they, they do, but sort of putting it together. Sure, sure. Okay. That that sounds um, that sounds good. We'll we'll see if we can do that. Let me see how many other teams need that. But I appreciate that feedback and um, take that into account for future years as well. And if we meet this afternoon, we could probably go through an example. Yeah, like that. Very simple.